In this video, I'm going to be going through the 2013 question, uh, HSC question 26A. Um, now, this question it asks us to draw a hex nut with, that will suit a bolt that is an M25 times 2 bolt. Um, now, they ask us to find the thickness of the bolt, the distance across the flats, and the drilled hole. Uh, that's the three, the three features they're asking us to do. Now, I've drawn this answer here, and I think this answer is acceptable for four marks, right? It's a four mark question. I think this is an acceptable answer, but there is a problem, right? The problem is that they've asked us to find across the flats rather than um, across the corners. So in this case, I'm going to demonstrate how we know that this, this uh, how we know that this looks wrong, right? This dimension here, 40 millimeters, is not to scale, right? It's not to scale, and I'll show you why that is. I have a circle template here, and I'm going to draw how how we should draw an isometric an isometric circle. Can you see how when we do that, it suddenly becomes instantly apparent how it's wrong, right? We can see how this dimension is squashed in order to fit the isometric, yeah? So the, the, when we draw an isometric drawing, some of the dimensions are to scale, but some of them are going to be a little bit distorted because of the, the way we want to make them isometric. Not as bad as perspective, but it's a, it's a um, similar concept. So what the HSC wants us to do instead, the HSC answer, uh, now, if you did this, I think that, I don't know, I didn't mark this question, I can't say. But I believe that there's a good chance that you would still get um, full four marks here, because there is enough in drawing an isometric circle and identifying these different sizes, I think there's enough going on in that question, that you're probably still going to get four marks, even though this dimension couldn't actually be taken off the drawing, right? It's, it's, uh, we've labelled it correctly, but we couldn't actually measure that drawing. What the answer shows instead is it shows that if we draw this distance and this distance, my angles, I, I didn't draw this with set squares, so it's going to be a little bit wonky, right? I'm just going to straighten up a little bit, so it's a little bit worse. something like that. So we know that if we were to box this hexagon, we can see that hexagons sit in rectangles. Now we need to refer to we need some terminology to refer to these sides. What do we call this side from this to this? What do we call that? We call it cross something. Cross section area. Cross flat. Across the flats. Okay. Now across the flats is important because you use the across the flats if you're using a spanner. Yeah, that's the distance, that's the size spanner that you need for that bolt. Right, so across flats is actually a very important um, dimension. So we're going to write that here. This di dimension here is the same, right? It's the same as what we just talked about. So that's the AF across the flat. Sometimes there's a, 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 a hyphen between. The other dimension, this distance from here to here, what do we call that? Cross corners. Cross corners, okay. So we can see that the across corners is bigger than the across the flats, <coughs> right? So in this triangle, this here is going to be our... This one's bigger than that one. Right, well that's the intention, just to make that one bigger than that one. Uh, so this will be our across corners, and this will be our across flats. And this way, someone could in fact, take that measurement directly off the drawing. Yeah, that's going to be better for us because as it is, we can't take that dimension off the drawing. Even though the diameter is correct, we can't take that dimension off the drawing. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to start from scratch and we're going to work it up from the, from, the, from the base, right? So we know what our end goal is going to look like. And it's really important as well to say that if we can determine our dimensions, we can get a lot of marks just for, um, I don't really need that anymore. We can get a lot of marks just for freehand, freehand sketching. That doesn't have to be drawn accurately as long as it looks okay. So, what we're going to do first is we're going to figure out our dimensions, and then once we have our dimensions, we're going to do a little sketch, and then we'll do it properly. So, the first thing we need to do is we need to say, well, for our dimensions, 
So for our bolt, if we're being told that we have an M25 bolt, what is the D, the D of our circle? Now for that, um, I'm going to talk about this drawing. So I have this little drawing down the bottom here. And in this case, we have a circle that's being drilled through, this D. Well, it, we have a circle that's being drilled through, but that is not D. In this case, D, the D is different, right? The D is different to the D min. And the reason for that is because if we have a bolt, the bolt, we should never show this drawing like this, but we're going to show it this time. Right. We have a different distance between our D and D min. D min and D. But when we have the nut, the nut is on the other side of the bolt. And so now when we remove that, we can see that the dimensions are different. That the drill diameter of a nut is different to the forged diameter of a bolt. So for the nut, the D min, the D min is going to be the size that you drill. And then, the size that you then cut, right, so when you tap nuts, so when you tap this nut, when you tap this nut, the D, the D, the D is gonna be the outer di dimension. So I'm gonna label that now. So I'm going to say that this dimension, the inner dimension is D min. Okay. That will have to do. Okay, so when we're talking about our threads, our D min is the size you drill for the nut, but the D is the size you forge for the bolt, and then you cut away. I always like to think that the C, this broken circle, this broken circle always is drawn in the metal. It's always drawn in the metal. So if we were drawing a bolt um, axially, we would see it differently. If we were drawing a bolt axially, A bolt actually would look like because here we're cutting inside to the inside the metal. If we we're looking at a bolt head on, we'd be looking inside the metal. Um, just because I happen to have this prop on my desk, if we're making this bolt, they forge this di dimension is D min. They forge this dimension as D min, and then we use a die to cut this away. We cut this away, and that becomes our D min. So if we were looking at this side, what we would see, the outer dimension would be the D. The inner ring that we're cutting in the metal, we're cutting in the metal, would be our D min. But for our bolt, uh, for our nut, what we do is we forge the bolt, we drill the hole, the size of the hole we drill is D min, and then we tap, we tap that thread to get our, our D. So these two will fit together. So the circle, when we're looking at these on edge, the circle here, the circle here is smaller than the sm circle we see there. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is, so, okay, when we talk about our bolt, we've been told an M25 bolt, what is the value of D? What is the value of D? 25. Thank you. Now, I'm not going to write millimetres for all of them after this point, right? Now, for D min, D min, do we calculate D min differently depending on if it's fine or coarse? Is this bolt fine or coarse? Fine. Fine. How do we know that? Because it's got an X. Yeah? Because it's got an X. So, this value here is going to be D, and this value here is P. So, if we don't know that value, what we would say is we take 0.8D, but because we do know that value, we say D minus P. So we're going to use this one. Uh, we're going to use this one. So we're going to say D minus P is 25 minus uh, 2. And our value is going to equal um, 23. Okay. 
Now the next thing we need to know is what are the there's ratios, there's set ratios for the the thickness. I've written H as the thickness, so you can see this is this value here. The thickness, it would also be this value here. But generally we don't dimension things twice. The thickness of the bolt, usually dimensioned by H, is it depends, it's different. We can even see in our scale model here as well, we can see that it's different, the nut is thicker than the head of the bolt. Yeah, what is that proportional distance? Well, I like to say, rather than saying 0.7, my mnemonic is I like to think of something happening at 7 o'clock and at 8 o'clock, right? So, I say if the head is 0 0.8, sorry, 0 0.7 and then nut 0 0.8. Um, eight, right? So, head then nut. Then, so, okay, if we want to calculate this value, I had this calculated earlier, but then I didn't. I deleted it. So, 0.7 times 25. Uh, because we're not doing a bolt head, I'm not even going to bother with that one. I don't want to confuse you by writing that down. So instead we'll do this one, we'll say 0.8 times 25 equals 20. Okay, we now have this other size, this dimension here, the one side of the hexagon, which I write as S hex, right? I, I only I call it that, I don't think it has a term, right? S hex. This value is 0 0.9 of the bolt. Right, which for us is 22.5. The cross the flats, we don't have a good mnemonic for, for this one. Right, you don't have to, there's no, no easy way for me to remember what that is. But the cross the flats dimension is going to be 1.6D. 1.6D. Uh, 1.6D is 40. Okay, across the corners, that is how we can we can see that is that across the corners, if we divide this into 60 degree triangles, right? These made of equilateral triangles. The across the corners is the same. If this value here is s, if this value here is s hex, then how many s hexes is this? Two. Excellent. Okay, so that gives us a value of 1.9, or I'm just going to do two s, uh, uh, two s hex, which is 45. Hey, we've got all our, dim all our dimensions now, so I can now say, well, oh, I've written the wrong thing. Uh, this is across corners, this is across flats. But I can say, now that we know this is across corners, this is across flats, we can say that our, we could draw this triangle up isometrically, and we could say, well, okay, this value here needs to be 45, and this side here needs to be 40. Now, once you have that, it's not particularly difficult to then uh, divide these in half. Once you divide these in half, what we can then do is we can take our value s and once we have our value s we can then just join that up to our corners and that will give, our, give us our hexagon that will give us our hexagon now, we do have to draw a, a circle. Now, there's a couple of ways that we can approach that. If we have to draw a, a circle, an isometric, you can box your circle. We don't actually really need these lines. What we need is instead this. And then, with a compass, if you were so inclined, I would never do this in an exam. When I did the exam, we used to have to do this, but that was 20 years ago, the exam was very different. 
right? So this compass goes from here to here, like that. That's the compass. And then I do the same from here. I have a video on YouTube that shows you how to do this. This compass goes from here to here. And that gives you something that looks a bit like a circle. Personally, I think you're better off just boxing it up and then freehanding. We're allowed to skip, we're allowed to freehand. The box will ensure that it's close. It just needs to touch all of those corners. Or, for the cost of a circle template, I recommend the Kent circle templates. And the reason for that is, um, I'll, I'll explain in a second. So this is a Kent circle template. The reason why a Kent circle template is um, good is we have some others uh, on the other side, and I can't guarantee for them that we're interested in, for a circle template for what to work for us, we need the label distance to be this distance here. The diagonals need to be correct. Whereas the circuit templates we have in the back of the room, this diagonal is given, and that's no good for us. Right? We need the correct distance. The diameter needs to be this distance from here to here. So we need the X or the diagonal. So yeah, we've got a question. Um, are we allowed to take those circle templates? You sure are. Say? You sure are. They, you're, um, they, when you go to um, the Nessic board information, they talk about what you're allowed to provide. I have this written. You're allowed to take in pens. You're allowed to take in pencils. You're allowed to take in set squares and rulers. You're allowed to take in scale rulers. Um, you're allowed to take in a board approved calculator. And you're allowed to take in circle templates and ellipse templates. Yeah. Once upon a time, you used to be able to take in T-squares. I don't really talk about T-squares anymore because not part of the not part of the course anymore. Not allowed to take in T-squares. Okay, so what I would do, and how close is my drawing? Pretty close. Instead, I wouldn't draw that. I would instead use this template, and you can see that if I get this template and I put it on here. And then I just draw it. If it's a size that's too small for your template, just freehand it. If the size is too small for you for a template, just freehand it. Okay, so that's how I would approach it. Now, so here, if my template is too small to fit in here, I would just freehand it and get get my shape that way. Now, we're going to do this thing from scratch. We're going to do it. I, I, I've got a little scale, and the thing is. If you, if you were running out of time, drawing this might well get you three marks. Drawing this might get you three marks, because what you've shown is you've demonstrated that you understand uh, what the question's asked. You've calculated those values. I personally would write this information. I would write all of this information to show that you've understood you're presenting more information than someone who knew nothing. Right? Uh, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to clear this off and we need to start yeah. We've got our guide just to help us. This guide here is going to help us how we're going to draw this picture. Um, we've talked about why we don't like to draw, how I had it before. We probably don't want to show it that way because it's going to give us the wrong value. So what I'm going to start by doing is I just need a reference point. So I need to have something that I can refer to later that is my horizontal and vertical axes, uh, my center lines, right? Uh, you could, if you were, it doesn't ask you to do this, but we could even show them as a center line. We could even show it as Right, turn into a similar line. We could do that. Um, and then, okay. Now, I've already calculated what size am I using for my, my drilled hole. It asks us to show the drilled hole. What size am I using? What size do we use for our drilled hole? So one of these two, is it D or D min? We're drawing a nut, yep, D min. Yep, so we're drilling using this inner circle, so D min. Okay, so in this case, I can line this up, line this up like this, just I line up my circle template. Now I happen to make this circle template the right size. Now I'm doing this in the dark line straight away because I don't want to have to go over it twice, so I know this is the correct size, so I'm going with my thick dark line now. I'm not using my construction line. Okay, so 
So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw up my across the corners distance. I've calculated that as 45, so half of 45 is 22.5. So I'm going to set my ruler to 22.5, and I'm going to get to what I think looks about right. I'm not using a set square, but you would. Why wouldn't you? If you've already got a set square, why wouldn't you use it? 45. Okay, so that's my across the corners distance. I then need to calculate my across the flats distance to, to do this as well. So that is 40, so I'm setting that here. About, that's the right angle. And then I'm going to draw my S hex, which we said is 22.5, so half of that is 11 and a quarter. So I'm drawing 11 and a quarter. Yeah, I'm trying to try and make sure I get the angle about right. Yeah, it looks quite right. Those lines look parallel. And then going up here, 11 and a quarter. Okay, so I've got SX, but I can probably make that a little bit better. I'm doing my angles just by eye. And then I know that I just need to join these up, so I'm just going to go over that. Okay. Um, now, I need to know the thickness of my bolt. Yeah. Just because mine, mine is done by eye, so I'm just going to... Yeah, something like that. Okay, I need to know the thickness of my bolt. We calculate the thickness of the bolt at being 20. So... I'll have to do. Um, we're going to dimension it. It's worth noting that I think there's always a temptation to draw that, but the depth of this from 20, we can see that 20, the bottom of that nut actually is down there. So it would have to be shorter for us to see um, to see the circle on the bottom there. So just keep that in mind that it could have been there if it was a different circumstance. If it had been, say, a lock nut, right? Lock nuts, uh, they're usually 0 0.5. I don't normally talk about that too much. Then, with my thin dark lines, I'm going to draw out my dimensions. They asked for us for, no, they didn't ask us for across corners, they asked us for across the flats. So, uh, I either have to rub out this or rub out that, so I think we're done with this little guide. I don't know why my blue pen is not working very well. Remember, these shouldn't touch. Now, typically we don't dimension lines in isometric, but they asked us specifically, so I would suggest that we still want to make sure that we're above the line and to the left of the line as much as we can. So we're going to say across the corners, sorry, across the flats. Uh, we were asked to give the dimension of that. Across the flats is 40. We were asked to give the thickness, oh, and the diameter of the bolt. Okay, so now here, I would definitely want to write above, uh, to, above the line to the left of the line. Writing on that side I think would be bad. So we're going to say that's 20. And then for the diameter, what I'm going to do, typically what we'll do is we have a line that points, and we 
we say that's 23. Now, although this is a drawing question, I want to point out that there's a lot of calculations that need to be done here. They didn't provide us with any of these three pieces of information. So I think that really I could see that there's a way that markers might say, potentially, they might say this is worth one mark, that's worth one mark, that's worth one mark, and that the drawing is worth one mark. The drawing, I don't know, the drawing requires enough work that I think that I would like to see that the drawing was worth two marks. Uh, I didn't mark this, I don't have any idea how they broke this up. I could look at the marking scale, I didn't. Um, now, I do have another question I'm going to look at, and we'll see how quickly I can do that. Um, attempts the sketch. You get one drawing just for attempting the sketch. You get one mark for just, if you didn't get one mark for just drawing a hexagon, I would say that's an attempt. Right? Two marks for substantially correct pictorial, pictorial sketch. Um, oh, okay, so it's worth four marks. Yeah. Um, three marks is provides substantially correct pictorial express with one appropriate dimension. So one dimension is worth one mark. Or um, if you drew the sketch pretty well perfectly but you didn't provide any dimensions. Um, provides a suitable, okay, and then for four marks you need to have all dimensions, yeah. Okay, so we have an idea of how, that, how this thing was marked. I'm going to look at the, this next question. Um, you know, I'm going to put this in a separate video. In this video, I'm going to be going through the uh, 2005 HSC question 18. Uh, what they've given us is an orthogonal drawing, they want us to produce a pictorial drawing. Uh, there haven't been a huge number of pictorial drawings in, that we've been asked to do recently. There was one in 2020, and then I think prior to that you have to go back to 2013 or something like that. Um, what we're going to look at here is that this question is, um, we've only got three minutes. So three, sorry, it's only three months, so we've only got about five minutes to do this question. Now they've asked to do it at a scale of 5 to 1. Now that, when we look at what are the three marks likely to be, I could actually get the marking criteria up, but you know, I'm too lazy. So uh, you can look at the marking criteria, and uh, I know they don't have answers for this. There may not even be a very clear marking criteria. I would say there's probably one mark for just getting something close to the right scale. There's another mark for getting something that's close to the general shape. But I would not expect there to be a huge lot of blood marks lost because if you didn't do everything exactly um, exactly correct. I would say a general shape. With, for a three mark question, you only really have time for a general shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this up at my arbitrary scale and to, to give you an idea that you don't need to worry too much about being accurate to the sizes. Um, I would just get the outside diameter, multiply that by five. It's important when we talk about scale that five to one is the same as saying five divided by, uh, five divided by one, which is the same as 500%, whereas 1 to 5 is the same as 1 divided by 5, which is 20%. Right, so pretty big differences there. Um, so we've got to make out a drawing, but I mean that's pretty going to be pretty apparent. When you measure this off the drawing, I've blown this up um, to a fairly large scale so I can see it, and hopefully it's picked up on the camera. So, I am going to set a timer and we're going to see how well I do in 5 minutes. I'm going to be talking as well while I do this, so that makes it a little bit different. Also, I'm not using set squares, which you have access to. So what I'm doing is I'm giving myself a, an axis to start off with. So... I've got my starting lines. A bit wonky here, but that's okay. So I've got my starting lines. If I wanted, I could actually draw this as a center line. Um, but I'm probably not going to, just I, we'll see how we go. Uh, once I've done that, I'm going to use a circle template. Now in my other video I talked about how we could draw circles, and there's YouTube videos with other people who explain things. What I'm going to just do quickly, in taking up some of my time here, is I like to think that before you draw, use a circle template, always think about if it was a cube, what would your circles look like? I find that really, really helps me, and I know that I want my drawing to look like this, so I'm going to, that helps me to think about how I set my circle template. Now, you'll notice I'm using a circle template, I'm using my isometric drawing te um, template, and 
generally in the HSA they want you to draw an isometric drawing. It is worth noting that you could draw an orth um, oblique drawing, and I will talk about that at the end, about how we could do that. Now that I've got my initial drawing, my initial circle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my hexagon. I'm just going to measure off these distances, multiply by 5, and I get my hexagon. Um, once I've got my hexagon, we then are going to draw in another circle. Now, if your circle template doesn't have that size, for instance, what we can do is we can just freehand it. Uh, that's, a, that's acceptable as well. I would suggest if you have time to box it up, right? Um, and then that's going to go back some amount. Now, it's worth mentioning that it's actually a little bit, be it's not actually flush, it's a little bit behind. So I've just drawn the circle twice or three times, and I'm going to outline that later. Uh, with my with these 45 to with this sort of uh, chamfer that disappears into the distance and then we're going to go back some distance and they're going to be at 30 degree lines okay uh, then my distance here relative to that it's not quite square but it's pretty close so it's going to be something like out here is my distance I can use my circle template again. I've already talked about in the other in the video I recorded this morning about how uh, you are allowed to take circle templates, both um, ellipse templates and circle templates, into the exam. I definitely recommend that. Um, then for this last one, I don't really need a circle template here, but I'm going to use one anyway. Now, you could draw this as a break. That's pretty close to what we're going to draw. I'm going to outline it now. Now, um, I have a sample answer from a textbook that people have published of past HSC questions, but you could, to show that it's a break, you could show this, but I don't think there's any real good convention for isometric, so don't worry if that doesn't look right. I have a minute, so I'm actually going to do this a second time. So a second time, what I do is I just draw my circle, probably with a circle template. I'm just drawing this whole shape out to the... Um, to the size provided. Now, um, then, I probably should draw this Constru like construction lines. So I found the center, and then I've moved it just back that little bit to set my circle back a little bit, and then degrees. Now, the reason why we don't use oblique more often is because oblique doesn't work well when we have circles in two directions. But because this circle all goes in one direction, we can actually get away with doing um, an answer in oblique. Um, now they're not perfect, they're obviously, I don't, don't know, I mean, they look like they're roughly to scale. They're not five times the scale of the original drawing, but they're good enough. Oh, okay, now I'm out of time, but I finished this one with a minute to go, so I don't know, I didn't hear the beep, because I put it on mute. Um, but I think that's a pretty good idea of how we're going to go about that. I don't have the marking criteria to, to discuss uh, what's going on. This here, this hexagon is not great. But with only three marks, the markers just don't have a whole lot of room to play. So what they're going to look at, I would think, is they say, well, okay, is the scale roughly five to one? Is the shape roughly there? Did they remember to set this, um, this pin back and have a flat area for this pin? That would probably be the main things I'd be looking for. So 
This hexagon, I didn't. I mentioned here that I would draw the hexagon off the scale, and even there, I can see the gap is maybe a little bit too too wide. But I haven't used a ruler at all, so um, at least you have some idea of what the answer should look like. Um, the answers I have uh, come from this book, AA1 Solutions, and they have a, a sample answer that I'll try to pick up on this something like that.